I just want to show you guys something uh, so you get an idea of what's happening out west. I'm like 700 miles from the um, fires in California, maybe 800. Um, you can see the smoke behind me here, kind of blowing in. But I think the uh, most incredible thing about this is this. We are getting ash from these fires. There's a lot happening out there. Maybe this is a good time to talk about what fires do for nature. Hey everybody, it's another beautiful day in paradise, as you can see behind me. I am uh, in the stunning uh, north side of Lake Tahoe. Absolutely gorgeous. The wind kicked up, so I'm kind of having to hide away a little bit. Uh, but as you could tell from the intro, um, I wanted to make this uh, a little bit of a different video. The inspiration coming from basically the fires that are going on all over California. Now, if you don't know, I'm sure most of you actually have felt the impacts of the smoke uh, across the country, but I think, um, you know, I think this is kind of a good time to point out some of the environmental benefits, and especially with some of the new things that we've got coming down the pike with um, Carbon X and uh, that granular material using biochar as a carrier, uh, it seems like talking about the carbon and ash and the effects of that on soil and soil health are, are pretty important. So here's what we're gonna dig right into. Now, obviously, fire's been taking place and uh, ripping through forests and vegetation for longer than humans have been around. It's just a natural cycle. Um, it, it's nature's way of kind of clearing the way of old and, and creating something new, even when it gets started by men instead of, you know, lightning strikes and things like that. Um, I spent a little time with a battalion chief the day before yesterday, uh, just here on the lake, um, who had been sending crews from Palm Springs up to the Ferguson Fire and now the Holy Fire and some of these other places, um, and kind of talking about that and their containment and their efforts there. So, in talking about terms of soil and revegetation, now I, I'm going to jump onto sort of the biochar side first, uh, and then kind of go from there. So, which but the most fascinating about biochar and and, and uh, you know this charcoal, this uh, green ash, if you want to call it, um, is how many different layers of soil and um, and even vectors. That, that it is starting to help with. Uh, I was reading a study early this morning um, out of Israel uh, where certain crops were treated with biochar, strawberries, um, beans, uh, different sort of core crops over there, and showing the data about how they were having less infestation of certain um, uh, fungi, powdery mildew, um, Certain bugs uh, were no longer attacking plants, and the the overall uh, health of the plant itself, by having biochar in the soil, was creating this this very positive impact. So, you know, when that ash, when that compound gets down into the soil, that carbon material, it creates uh, a, a sort of a resting place for uh, nutrients, for water, for air, for uh, colonization of soil bacteria and allows for this new uh, space for life to form. And it has an incredible half-life. It's like a thousand years. Uh, so, you know, this is something that can stick around in the soil and, and the addition of it into the soil continues to create those spaces and allow for more colonization and ultimately a healthier soil profile, healthier plants, things like that. Now, uh, from where I've seen that, 
uh, in a few just very specific instances. Uh, I have a customer, a longtime friend, Ed Gifford, who is down in uh, Stewart, Florida. He had a customer, I believe, on Jupiter Island, and um, they had an arborist tell them to put biochar out around some palm trees. And so they did, and what they noticed is that every time it rained, there was a square in the grass around where they put this biochar out. And it continued to happen year over year over year. And it was a visible representation of where nutrients and water and, and soil health was taking place in an exact square on a, a sandy, uh, very calcitic soil structure. Now, another customer of mine in Georgia uh, posted a picture about an area where he burned the year before and then put seed out and had this sort of greenest, uh, most lush portion of his lawn and, and was actually posing the question, you know, is this because of the ash? Is this because of the burn? What was this about? So there's a few things that take place with a burn compared to just putting out the carbon. Now, with the high temperatures, uh, you do end up killing off uh, soil bacteria in the top however many inches that the heat is actually affecting, okay, so that, that needs to be uh, really clear, is not, the soil doesn't die, right, but if you're a cook or, you know, you enjoy that, you know meat has to be cooked to a certain temperature to avoid bacterial problems, um, there, there's a temperature where bacteria will start to die and it's around that 212 degree point, boiling water. So, you can see that in a fire, um, when the earth is scorched, right? But you dig into it and there's still soil. So obviously bacteria is going to be affected down to a certain point, but not the whole thing. So now you put in a new carbon structure, you've got this ash, um, something that's going to start to work its way down through into the ground. Any sort of vegetation that was protected down underneath in these cooler zones is going to have a new and healthier area to grow up into. Now that leads into another thing, okay? When we talk about humic acid, linardite shale, where does that come from? You know, there's people who pull linardite, or not linardite, but humic out of peat bogs. Uh, I get my linardite from New Mexico. That was all old forest uh, areas that had burned down, that had been covered, uh, whether it was volcanic or, or anything else, but you have this basically sort of a dirty coal in a sense and it's highly porous, it, it's got a high amount of ash content and carries all of those elements that the, you know, uh, that would basically be a very old, long farther stage, somewhat biochar. So when you start using these compounds together, you get different things. Now there's, there's lignin in those um, linardite shale deposits. That's the humus, that's the humic, that's organic matter, that's everything that you, you hear about when talking about those items. So, we're now moving through a few different things. When I was a kid, I did a study, an independent study in elementary school in 1988 uh, about the Yellowstone fire. And, you know, one of my fondest memories as a child is going to Yellowstone National Park. Uh, we used to take motorhome trips up there and I remember just being absolutely devastated by this fire. So, I did an independent study for this class that I, I was part of in, a, in an elementary school and um, you know really learned about the, the aspects of fire and the benefits of fire and, and kind of where it you know ends up helping the environment by germinating seeds that couldn't otherwise grow because the heat. Um, going back there in the mid 90s and seeing how much regrowth had taken place was mind-boggling. Then seeing it again in the early 2000s and just kind of moving through time and how this entire ecosystem has been rebuilt. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you can see the remnants of those, some trees that still stand there, uh, but it's, they, they're just kind of clearing out and falling down. There's new stands of trees, new stands of flowers, uh, new areas to graze for the animals, and, and it's, it's just changed the environment. One of the biggest and scariest things that happens in these California fires is when it burns out all of this earth it usually happens right before rainy season, and then mudslides tend to happen, and then that becomes a different animal. Because the vegetation on a lot of these hillsides is holding the hill in place, and you've heard me talk about that before. Plants are there to hold soil in place, not the other way around, and sometimes when you wipe that vegetation out, now the soil has nothing holding it in place, and it all ends up down the hill. So that's going to be an 
an interesting thing. But so I, I want everybody to just sort of think about that. Um, as if the smoke is affecting you, you know, I, it's, it's, I read it was covering, you know, 3,000 miles in the United States. Um, I was in Portland, Oregon. I saw it there. Uh, in Utah, I saw it there. The Nevada desert, it's all over there. Uh, in Tahoe, you can see behind me, it's not so bad, uh, but it is there. Yesterday was far worse. There's a wind today that kind of kicked things out. So it's, but it's affecting everybody. Um, and that's really it. I just, I just wanted to touch on, on this a little bit and sort of the benefits of that carbon and that burn uh, and what that's actually going to do to the soil as far as creating, you know, more oxygen, more fertile soil, um, and really actually enlivening an area, even though it seems to be decimated, its recovery time is so much faster. So that's really all I got. I just, you know, kind of wanted to share this beauty, check in on everybody. It's been about a week and uh, here's what's going on. So I'll talk to you guys real soon.